Good afternoon, everyone. I think we can begin now and more people will join as we go. So good afternoon and welcome to the Future Career Snippets Students Chat with Experts event organized by the SEER, Scientix, the STEM Alliance and the Career Advisors Network. I'm Aishwarya, the project and pedagogical officer of the SEER project and in charge of coordinating this event. I'll also be moderating the chat today. We are joining you from the European Schoolnet office based in Brussels. Before we begin, I would like to remind all our participants today to keep their video and audio off because this session is recorded. During today's chat, we will be focusing on STEM careers. We have two speakers for today. We have Lenny Abink. She's a donor physician in training, and we have Tiago de Santana, Technology Manager at Life Terra Foundation. So what we will do is we'll begin with maybe Lenny. Would you like to introduce yourself, your work? Yes, and what of course. you course. Thank you very much. Are you guys hearing me? All right. Yes, we can hear you. Oh, thank you. Um, so hello, everyone. My name is uh, Leonie Abink. I am from the Netherlands and um, and as my colleague just said, um, I work in uh, as a donor physician in training. Um, so I started my uh, studies in biomedical sciences, um, which is more of a science career um, because I always thought I wanted to um, work in science, uh, do research in the medical fields, biomedical fields. Um, so I started my bachelor's there, that's three years first. Uh, but then I found I just wanted to be able to do more um, directly in a patient's life. So I wanted to have more of a, uh, well, uh, direct, more of a direct impact on patient's life than only by doing research, because research, sometimes it can take quite a long time before you see the results of, of research for the patients, for example. Um, so then I decided I also wanted to study medicine so, and I, I actually wanted to combine both. So I did a master's that combined the biomedical sciences and the medicine uh, part. Um, so I am actually a doctor now, um, but in the Netherlands you still have to do, uh, and I think almost everywhere in the world you have to do uh, uh, a training, uh, education before you can be a, a specialist doctor. Um, I started first started working after my medicine studies in uh, in hospital uh, in internal medicine um, because I always thought I wanted to become a hematologist, which is a doctor uh, that um, uh, focuses on, uh, for example, blood cancers, blood diseases. Um, I always found that very interesting, uh, so I wanted to to uh, start working in the hospital to see if that was maybe uh, something for me. Um, but then I found out just like the, I really liked the internal medicine part, but I just didn't really like working in the hospital. Very long hours. Sometimes you don't have a lot of autonomy, so you don't always um, can do the stuff that you actually want to do. You just have to kind of do the stuff that um, people above you want you to do. I didn't, I didn't really like that. Um, so then I was going to see, uh, I was uh, I was looking for something outside of the hospital and I uh, came uh, across Stichting Matches which is the stem cell donor um, bank in the Netherlands. So the Dutch uh, donors who have um, uh, inscribed in, in our uh, stichting, um, they say they want to be, become a stem cell donor, and um, that is what I am doing now. So I work as a donor physician in training, which means, means I still am doing my education to become a full time <laughs> donor physician. Um, so I'm doing kind of an internship at Stichting Matches now, and I will still um, uh, get to know all of the parts that are important to, to know as a donor physician. So uh, stem cell donation, uh, blood donation, but also donation of organs and of other tissues. Uh, but I think we can get uh, more into that uh, maybe with some questions later. Um, I think this is maybe some introduction. Is that enough? Thank you, thank you, Lenny. All uh, right. Before we go on with uh, Tiago, I would also like to welcome all the teachers here today. Uh, feel free to send us messages, questions, where you're joining us from. Thank you for joining. Uh, Tiago, would you like to go next? Uh, yes. So good 
Good morning. In Spain, we say good morning before two, so good morning to everyone. <laughs> uh, my name is Tiago de Santana. Uh, I am Brazilian, but I currently live and work here in Spain. And I started my career studying mechanical engineering, typical child that used to mount Legos and break things apart to understand how it works. Then during my graduation, I could do an internship in a big chemical industry, a little bit what Leonie said, you don't even know how you, who your boss is, you're just there to make sure uh, things follow the processes and very, let's say, impartial job. Um, then I also did another internship in a very different environment, a very small uh, company that used to uh, keep some services for this big industry. And then completely you work directly with your colleagues and, and you have like much more impact even as an intern, uh, or what you're doing and, and making decisions. But both experiences really helped me to have these perspectives on all these different ways and, and that you can have different environments that you can, that you can, um, that you can experience. And as you're going to see, chemical industry was not even my, my, my major and it's not even our work, but in the end, really doesn't matter when you are starting your career. Just try to expose yourself to, to work. That's that's what I mean the most important. Then after I graduated, uh, it was a hard time back in Brazil. We kind of having a crisis. I could not find a job, so I decided to keep studying. So I decided to make a masters. I went to the Netherlands in learning in Enschede. You might know the the city. Um, in renewable energy, usually I wanted to work in renewable energy. I saw a future for the fields and I wanted to also be related to more sustainability or work for more for more purpose. And doing this master's, I had an opportunity to do an internship in a consultancy firm. For, I used to work with a lot of non-technical people, used to write proposals and projects to get European subsidy. And even though it's, it's a bit of a non-technical job, I could you can clearly see that my technical background uh, helped me to bring a different perspective for a non-technical uh, work. And that thing helps, helps me a lot. And nowadays, I'm very happy to say that I, now I work for a project that I helped to get financed, which is the Life Terra project. We are a foundation in a project and we plant trees in Europe, but that, in a very, very summary. And uh, nowadays I'm kind of the technical coordinator. We have a website to, to show the trees and to have, bring a little bit more transparency to the field. We have applications to help people doing the planting event to track their trees. And I also coordinate we are developing some satellite monitoring systems, monitoring of the trees on fields, CO2 estimations. And I have to say that don't, I, I have a team, right? So it's for me right now, I combine a lot of technical, I have to know a lot of technical to, to be able to talk to the experts, but also there's a, a big part of non-technical skills that I have to use to, to manage all, all these people together and that's pretty much it and i'm uh, happy to answer any questions that you might have okay uh we don't have questions yet while we wait for questions maybe you can tell us a little bit about what your regular work day looks like you can go you can go first Lenny. or lenny you can go first yeah <laughs> All right, all right. Um, so usually my working day starts at 8.30, um, so half past eight, um, at my office, which is in Nijmegen, which is also uh, where I live in the Netherlands. Um, so I bike to my work, which is really nice. <laughs> um, and then uh, I start at uh, 8.30 and usually I start with uh, checking my emails. Um, because uh, we have both have a personal email and also a medical services email. So that's really the, the inbox, the mailbox from uh, for all the donor physicians that work at Stichting Matches. Um, we have two locations actually. So we have a location in Nijmegen and a location in Leiden. 
um, that's on the other side of the country and the west side uh, of the Netherlands. And um, um, in this inbox, this mailbox for the medical services, we get all kinds of emails, um, usually from direct colleagues, uh, the donor coordinators, but for example, they um, they do all the planning, all the managing of of uh, everything that is important in our in our work. Um, so usually I have uh, um, two, uh, one or two um, um, examinations of uh, possible stem cell donors. So these um, these potential stem cell donors, they are matched um, to a specific patient somewhere in the world. So it's a pretty international um, way of working um, because to get a stem cell transplantation, first uh, people uh, almost always look in the uh, in the family to see if there's a match for stem cells there, uh, which they don't always find a match there. So then they start looking in the worldwide uh, stem cell donor bank. Uh, and of course, uh, we as Stichting Matches are also um, um, part of this uh, uh, worldwide database. Um, so then uh, if, a, if a Dutch donor gets matched to a patient somewhere in the world, it can be the Netherlands or um, the new United States or wherever, um, then this donor goes uh, into the CT phase is what we call it. So then the matching is going to be um, um, checked again to see if it's really a good match. And also they have to fill in a whole of a, a, a health um, a list, all these questions about their health and uh, diseases they might have. Um, and if they go through that phase, then they come to have their examination. Uh, that is when they're, uh, they are the primary donor is what we call it. So the donor that is actually the best match for the patient. Um, and they come to get an examination. So this examination usually takes about two hours. Uh, that's at least the part that I do. Um, so, for example, it starts at nine. So I come in at the office at 830 and then at nine I start this examination. Um, first, I will do a very... Um, um, extensive information uh, part where I, where I give all the information to the potential donor about what it means to be a donor, what it means to have a patient somewhere in the world that is waiting for your stem cells, uh, and also, of course, about the donation process, um, how that goes. Um, and then uh, afterwards, I do the really the, the medical stuff. So we go again through a, a, a health questionnaire. Um, uh, also do physical examination uh, to see if I find any any um, yeah stuff that may be wrong with the with the potential donor, uh, and also do blood work so I um, I get their blood uh, um, done and then uh, we also see uh, um, if there's anything wrong uh, on the inside you could say. Um, and then they go also go to uh, the Radboud UMC, which is like the, the, the academic hospital that is close to us. And they will also get uh, a photo from their lungs and also uh, their heart is uh, checked. And all these results will come in during the, the next week. Um, and during the days, I will have to follow up with all these results that come in. Uh, so usually I have one or two of, of these examinations per day and then in total, like this week, I had a lot. I had five examinations uh, this week, which is quite a lot. But sometimes it's just one, sometimes it's two. Um, and it just really depends on on um, how much don donors are being matched uh, in the Netherlands, uh, how, man how many examinations I will have during the week. Um, and then, yeah, like I said, the rest of the day, I will just uh, get in all, the res all these results. I will have to check them. Um, there's always um, emails coming in int into the medical services inbox that I have to look at. Um, and there's still a lot of other aspects uh, around this whole process. Um, but I will not go into detail that uh, on that now. I think that's not uh, the most important. So I will give uh, Tiago uh, the word. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I mean, I think my days is, is more boring than Ellie. <laughs> but uh, me, I also start at nine. I usually go through my emails or the, we have an internal communication system to see any pending things. My main focus in the first hours in the, in the morning is to 
make sure nobody's waiting me for a decision or for something, for some kind of information to really make people uh, know what to do during the day. And then more towards the end of the day in the, in the afternoon, I focus on developing some systems. Right? So right now, for example, we have this application that you can do in a planting event. You can, volunteers can tag the trees, right? And right now we're in a phase to uh, help other organizations, other NGOs doing similar things to always, also use this system. So I'm working in a in an easy online form where organizations can submit a planting event and then can automatically receive a link to access our what we call tagging tool. And then usually it's developing and some meetings to see if something works. After you have something done, it's always nice to always keep check who the users or colleagues to just to make sure that you don't spend too much time developing something and just check if this is actually is is the purpose of what you're doing in the in the end. You always you always try to to have as many checks as you can. Then you can keep always adapting the the development to the to the actual objective to make sure that you are you are solving someone's problem and not and not what you think is a problem. But basically, that that's it mainly. I mean, I go to the office I think two times a week, but they do have the flexibility working from home. So now today, for example, I am at home. Okay, we have a few questions here. First one is, what inspired you to pursue your current career path? Leonie, would you like to go first? Yeah, of course. Um, I think uh, it was also a little bit of a question on the career sheet. Um, and um, I, I, I don't have a very specific person, for example, that inspired me to do the, the job that I do now. Um, I did always like uh, just uh, biomedical sciences or, or biology when I was uh, little. Um, I was al always already uh, playing doctor, <laughs> so trying to heal my my uh, pets and heal my uh, stuffed animals and stuff like that. So maybe it's not <laughs> that weird that I became a doctor after all. But um, yeah, I just just in in primary school and secondary school, I really liked uh, the biology, not the plant stuff. I didn't really like the plant stuff, but I really liked the the, the more medical stuff and 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 just how how humans work, you know, and how diseases uh, work and why people get diseases. Um, and then I, I think also my biology teachers were just really nice people uh, that I liked. So I think that's also an important part. Um, but uh, yeah, they, they just uh, um, uh, did a very good job of, of, of getting my attention for, for the, the, uh, the course and, and biology. So then um, uh, I, I did find out that I just really liked to get uh, deep into the why behind stuff you know I was always asking why but why why is this happening why is this uh, happening to this person and how does it work and uh, I just really wanted to know the why and that's also why I started the biomedical sciences uh, at first because I think that was um, I think I was at an uh, I don't know how it's called in English but um, I was just kind of seeing what I wanted to do for ne for my uh, next studies and then uh, I think it's called an open day or something in the Netherlands so you s go to a university and just see what kind of educations there are and then there was one person uh, that was talking about uh, biomedical sciences study um, and that person was saying like uh, yeah if you want to get to into the why behind why stuff is happening then you do bi biomedical sciences and I was like oh yes this is me <laughs> I need to do this so that's uh, maybe that person kind of inspired me to get into the biomedical sciences um, and then just yeah just during during the, the, the first part of my studies I um, sometimes had uh, um, uh, courses from uh, medical doctors um, and I was like okay if they, what they do I also really like I mean I like the science part uh, just like I said earlier, I like uh, to have an impact on, on patients by doing science, but then also just a more direct impact. Uh, so that's why I went into the, the medical um, part. I think that's uh, kind of it. 
yeah so for, for me that's what i said i mean i used as a children as a child i, I like the legos and mounting stuff and and so for me it always kind of was clear that i was making engineering it was more a little bit about which engineering and was not a specific reason but i chose mechanical engineering uh, I used to give a lot of um, focus on, on, on watch, but I think as my experience as was working and having contact with the work-related environments, I started to give more, more focus on not what I'm doing, but why I'm doing, right, or for what purpose I'm doing. So that's why I did the Masters in Renewable Energy, was kind of me to make the switch to more sustainability. And I am very happy to say that, that I really like to why I'm happy, what I work today, which is like the planting trees things and the sustainability. So I think what inspired me today is not what used to inspire me, but what inspired me today is really the, the purpose of, of, of what you're doing. Okay. Uh, while you're on that very related question, what is your favorite part of your job from Ivana? Danny? Yeah, shall I start again? Yes. <laughs> um, favorite part of the job? Uh, I think just the, just like I told before, the, the, the examination that I do uh, during the day of a potential stem cell donor, um, because um, I, I found out during my uh, biomedical sciences that I really like to have interaction actually with people. Uh, during my biomedical sciences study, I was just um, kind of doing research in the lab and you're quite on your own a lot. And I didn't really like that. I mean, sometimes I like that, but not all the time. Um, and uh, I, I think one of the most, uh, well, one of the nicest things about being a doctor is that you can connect to people uh, almost on a daily basis um, and I do also have that with my uh, potential stem cell donors now because um, you get a little bit of an insight into their lives what they do and of course also their health you know uh, sometimes there can be pretty heavy stuff um, also because a stem cell donor might actually have personal experience with a family member that got a stem cell transplantation and maybe that's why they signed up to be a stem cell donor. Uh, so sometimes you get really beautiful but also heart-wrenching stories about that. Um, and it's just, yeah, I really like like this talk that I that I have with, with these donors. Um, and it's I think that also inspires me to do my best during the day to to help them uh to to make sure that i um um yeah i don't know i am the best possible daughter physician i can be i think uh, because they they um become a stem cell donor to do something good for uh, for a patient that they don't even know they don't know who it is they will they will never hear who gets their stem cells they only hear uh 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 it's a cult that you know female or male uh, and whether they um and the kind of the the age of the the patient that's the only thing that they uh, will get to know and they still want to do good by donating their stem cells so that's just beautiful thank you and tiago um my favorite part i think I would say solving problems and someone comes to me and say, hey, Tiago, we, this task is taking me too much time or we want to improve this kind of thing. And then I have to sit down with the team and start to thinking, oh, OK, how can we how can we make this better? How can we solve this? And then all these steps on developing and then the most um, the, the, the best compliments that I can receive is that after something's finished, someone says, oh, Thiago, this tool that I'm using uh, is being saving me a lot of time. And then this is, and then you, you, you're sure that you, you solve the problem, solve the problem of someone. That's, the, that's pretty much, uh, I think, the, the most rewarding part. Okay. Uh, we have several questions here. 
maybe we can first look at uh, Diego from Spain. He has a question. He says, I would like to know what advice would you give to high school students who are at the point of making a decision about their career and are not sure which direction to take? What advice would you have for them, Lenny? Um, I think one very important thing is know that the decision you make right now is not for ever. <laughs> um, I think that's uh, also something that is still pretty new. Maybe it's it's um, more our generation that works like that because earlier, you know, our parents and grandparents they started a job and they worked there for like their whole lives. You know, it's just not how it works anymore right now. Um, so um, I would say just try to find something that you really, really like, um, something that you really get uh, uh, excited about and see what kind of job or what kind of education um, you can find that goes kind of in that direction. You know, you just you don't have to know exactly where you want to end up. I didn't know that when I started my biomedical sciences and now I'm even at a very different point than where I thought I was going to be. So um, I also hear that around me with my friends, um, with my colleagues, everyone just takes their own path and then uh, they go in one direction and then uh, a few years later they go in the other direction. And I think oh, you, you will eventually find something that you really, really like. Maybe it will not be the first job, maybe it will not be the second job. Uh, but you will eventually find something that you really, really like. Um, just, just take your time um, and make sure, yeah, make sure that you know that, yeah, just the that one decision is not gonna uh, be the <laughs> most important decision of your life. Um, I know people, especially sometimes uh, secondary school teachers, can make it look like it is the most important decision of your life, but it is not. <laughs> so just, yeah, that, I think that's my. Uh, my advice. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. I, think I completely agree with Leonie. I mean, I mean, just looking on my career path, I started with mechanical engineering, then I worked for a chemical industry, then I went for consultancy, and now I work more for IT systems. And and it really, I mean, of course, I mean, choose what you like the most, what you think is the best option, what the best um, uh, choice, but that's not going to define your career. I mean, nowadays, there's plenty of opportunity in different fields. I think nowadays it is appreciated also someone with a different background work in a different field because, like I said, when, when I work for a non-technical job, my main, the main thing I was bringing was my technical background, was not the skills, let's say, most used in the day-to-day, the, the -to -day, but but my differentiation was my technical background. So it really, in the end, you're gonna see that, I don't know how many years, in Brazil, the graduation is five years. And I used to think that's an eternity. And right now I think back five years is nothing, it's absolutely nothing, it's, it's go pass by super quick. So make your best choice, but don't worry that much. You can always change it. You can always make a new graduation. So just, I think the most important is to be ready to adapt with the circumstances. You're going to see what you like the most. Also, you're going to depend on the opportunities that you're going to face uh, um, uh, during, during your career. Again, my experience, when I started my career in mechanical engineering, you probably don't know, but Brazil was having a, a boom, economic boom. Everyone was saying engineering would be, have plenty of opportunities. But when I graduated, I graduated in a crisis with no opportunities. And I now work in IT systems, which is a sector that is very, very, uh, with a lot of opportunities. But when you guys gonna graduate, maybe something different, different will come up. So just be ready to adapt and, and, and that, that's the most important. We have um, a question from Eddie. He asks, were you always a good science student or did you discover your passion later? Um, always a good science student. Hmm, good question. <laughs> um, I think, um, I think I always liked science. Um, as I was saying earlier, 
I always wanted to know the why behind processes, behind why people do what they do and why people get sick and stuff like that. Um, and I think that's maybe one of the most important things to have if you want to become uh, a science student or, or want to go into science because you have to be curious, you know, you have to be constantly curious and want to know more about a certain aspect. Um, it doesn't really matter in what part of science you are. I think that's maybe one of the most important uh, things to have. Just curiosity and uh, wanting to understand why uh, things go the way they go or uh, not go the way they go. But um, I think that's one of the most important things. And I think I always had that. <laughs> I'm all, I've always been a curious uh, person. Um, and yeah, in school, I uh, I was not always in in the uh, in the front. You know, I was a little bit more in the background. Um, I think that's very <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That's that's what a lot of people in science uh, see also around them uh, and in themselves. So um, yeah, I think I've always been a kind of a kind of a science student uh, like that. Um, but of course, more the the passion towards uh, becoming a doctor has come quite a lot later. I mean, I was saying as a child, I was already playing doctor, but of course, that also went away again a bit. Uh, and then I was uh, thinking I was going to work in in science, um, and then later on I find the passion the the passion to go into the the medical uh, services. So I think uh, there's some stuff that you already are and that you already know and that uh, are are typical for you, but there's always also with skills and and stuff that you uh, get to know about yourself uh, later on in life and maybe find a new passion again then. Yeah, for me, I always work, uh, was good in math and just more, let's say, uh, technical subjects, physics, I always has this interest. Uh, so like I said, it's always was very clear that I was towarding towards engineering and this kind of field. And I used to be a bad student on, on languages, on, on writing. But for example, nowadays, a big part of my job is speaking different languages, different things from, from different types of the world. I work writing proposals, so it's basically writing. So, I mean, you have to understand what you like and be a good student and not even saying good grades, I would say, but like what you like, like what you watch. When you when you when you have to study of this of all your subjects, well, which one you like the most, which one you you are more interested. Uh, but being a bad student in, in another subject doesn't mean that you're not going to succeed in this field. It's just you may it might be a bit of time and a bit of how things are being uh, being taught to you and how things are being presented to you. So again, like the decision that you are about to do. It, it, at the, uh, in the end of the high school, don't don't give that much importance for for results right now. It's much more for uh, I mean to be comfortable in what you're doing and to to, to expose yourself for the different situations uh, in life. That's some very useful advice. Uh, what else do we have? We have Ivana. Asking, what would you say is your biggest accomplishment? <laughs> really nice question. Uh, I was I, I was seeing it in the chat and I was already thinking about it. <laughs> um, I think it's a quite a difficult question. I think maybe one of the things about science students or science uh, people is that they are not really people that uh, are, you know, big about their accomplishments. So maybe some people are and they get maybe to the top I don't know but <laughs> no I don't really like uh, like talking about accomplishments and stuff like that but what I do really like um, is when uh, for example a stem cell donor says to me that they really liked the conversation that we had um, and that they trust uh, that I am doing the best that they that I can for them for example and also when I worked in the hospital uh, sometimes there was a patient that I really had a good connection with and um, uh, this patient was telling me like I completely trust you I trust that you um, uh, will 
uh, try to do the best you can for me. And that's, I think that feels like the most important accomplishment uh, at that moment, at least, but also like in, in general, just just um, uh, the knowledge that people appreciate what you do in your job. Um, and I think that always feels like a big accomplishment. Tiago? Uh, for me, I think the, the biggest accomplishment for me is like seeing the trees that we plant thriving. So in the summer, we did a, we did a field monitoring in an area here in Spain that was burned, that we planted two years ago. And was very happy to see that we had a good survival rate. A lot of the trees are really a meter high and you see they're thriving. They're like when I'm talking about purpose, why right? you, you work in systems and behind a computer. But then when you see the, the, the end goal of your work, I mean, going the right direction is that, uh, I think it's, uh, it's the best accomplishment that, 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 that you can have. We have another question from Luigi. Do you have a mentor or role model who has significantly influenced your career decisions? Um, for me, not really. Um, I think uh, I also put it in the career sheet, but um, a lot of people in my family have worked in uh, healthcare sector, um, which I think kind of influenced me to at least have a connection with healthcare. Um, and uh, um, but yeah, there's not not really one person that really influenced me to get into this career path. Um, so I can't say I have a really specific mentor or role model that has influenced me. Just just certain yeah, um, uh, different people at different time points in my life who have uh, given me a kind of push or have inspired me to to go a certain way um, to try something. Also, sometimes just friends, you know, friends that you talk to and they give you very good advice and they uh, inspire you to take a chance or, or uh, go in a certain direction. So not a specific role model, just just people in my life. <laughs> Um, yeah, for me also, I don't never had a really, a really mentor for my career. Of course, family, parents always supported me in all the decisions. I mean, I, I have been, I changed countries, right? I have quite a, a change in, in, in the career. So it's very important to, to, to have support from the family to make these decisions. But it's not that I was following someone or someone was was telling kind of okay you go to that direction that no, no, that direction and also i don't i don't think there's any role model i mean my career changed that much that i think it would be hard someone had the, the same the same career path as me so yeah i think like i said it's more like always be open-minded and adapting as the circumstances changes around you okay we have Evita asking, what are the career prospects for someone with your skill set? What is a possible next step? Um, so I think the, the nice part about working in, in science in general, I think it's, it's, it's like Tiago said a little bit earlier, also like there's, just skills that you develop in this field that um, uh, mean that they you can work like anywhere, I think, in almost any field that you want. Um, that's what I found out that uh, when I started doing university in general, and definitely if you do more of the beta sector, you know, kind of the, the, the sciences, the math, the technical uh, aspects, that stuff, um, I think you can almost work in almost any field that you uh, like. Um, for example, if I uh, didn't like working in uh, donor, uh, the donor um, medicine sector anymore, I could always, of course, go back to the hospital. But then I could also also do consultancy, also like Tiago already said that he did in his career. Um, you can go into the business uh, part, uh, the pharmaceutical sciences, um, um, 
education, of course, there's always, uh, uh, they're always looking for people to work in education in whatever field, but definitely also biology and stuff like that. Um, so I think just, just the general skills that you develop during your science studies is something that makes sure that you can yeah, work in a lot of fields. So that's something I really, really like about this, uh, this sector and this, this field of work. Yeah, for me, I think um, the thing I think the two paths that I can go, which is one is go towards more management and let's say do less actual technical stuff and start to manage more people, always related to technical, but uh, go to more managerial. Or I can choose more some specific uh, part of the technical and be specialized and then you become um, a specialist in a, in a language or in a system that would be the the, the main prospects but i'm like talking a little bit more as uh, what i'm doing like more related to it it's right the field it's really really every company will have a computer will have an internal system we have a website we have a some kind of um, electronic so this pretty much can you can work in in any any industry but uh, then talking about tasks is i think that's as you grow or you can specialize more and you you'll be a very specialist okay you are the person to do a specific thing or you're gonna be be going towards more managing and as you get experience you're gonna be sharing and overseeing and supervising uh other people doing the same to make sure that they don't make the mistakes that you already made in the past <laughs> Okay. Eddie wants to know if there's a lot of competition in your field. Has it been difficult? Um, yeah, it's uh, um, in the different fields that I've worked, uh, it's pretty, um, pretty different. So, for example, in the biomedical sciences, uh, there's quite a lot of competition to get a job, for example, to get a PhD, to go into to re the real science part, um, because there's quite a lot of people um, that want to do a PhD and uh, then uh, you have to make sure that you <laughs> present yourself <laughs> in, the, in the right way to um, get that job sometimes. Um, also, uh, for the, the uh, masters that I did, so the... the um, uh, the combination of medicine and biomedical sciences that was a pretty uh, hard study to get into um, because uh, in the whole of the Netherlands um, or at least in, in to get into that uh, education there's uh, 40 um, places uh, for like almost the whole of the Netherlands so that's <laughs> Uh, quite a, a few spaces and and not uh, at least not a lot of space and uh, very a lot of people that want to do that, so that was also quite um, competitive to get into. Um, for the job that I do right now, um, I would say uh, not that much because there's especially in the uh, in the donor physician field, but uh, I think in 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 social medicine, so outside of the hospital in general, there's um, uh, uh, kind of a big uh, yeah empty space uh, regarding doctors and 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 nurses and stuff like that. There's just uh, always they are always looking for for other doctors, other uh, people that want to work in the the more social medicine part. Um, so this job, uh, of course, we don't. It's not, it's not like they uh, take anyone that applies to the job. But um, I think it was a little bit less competitive than uh, than if I had wanted to work in the science, uh, more of the the real science field. So, for example, PhD or something like that. Um, so yeah. Okay, so it's uh, it depends. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Okay. And Tiago? Uh, for me, I think because of my experience, I think it really depends on on where you are. To be honest, um, like I said, when I graduated in Brazil, I had a very hard time to find a job. I do see things here in Europe. Uh, with more opportunities, more, it's just a, just a bigger economy, just a more, 
uh, more companies, more things happening here. So, but just to talk about IT in general, I do think there's a lot of competition. There's a lot of people going to this field because people see a future, but at the same time, there's a lot of opportunity as well. Like I said, every single company you have internal systems. I mean, the fact that you're using a video conference, I mean, everyone nowadays make meetings in these kind of platforms or communication messages. And so I, I, I do see, like, like the niece said, it's not that there will be no few that you can apply and then you get a job immediately. You have to be good in what you do, you have to see where you, you want to be. But I do see a lot of opportunities in, in IT for the coming for the coming uh, for the coming years. And I probably that the AI question is coming. It's very tricky. And I don't even know if anybody knows that the answer of that question. <laughs> Diego, I just want to uh, point out that your video seems to be stuck. Oh. Yeah. Maybe you can turn it off and turn it back on. Is it better? No, it's still frozen. Oh. Okay, now it's off. No. And it's on. Yes, it's fine. Thank you. Hmm. So, do you think that generative AI can impact your job in the near future? <laughs> yeah, very good question. <laughs> um, I think it's it's also a very big um, question in the medicine field, of course. Uh, I think in healthcare there are some um, uh, specific fields that uh, AI has been used for quite some years already. For example, in radiology, you know, that's um, where they make the pictures of uh, the chest or the, the general body, for example, to see uh, if something is wrong inside. Um, I think that's, I think, one big uh, field where uh, AI has been used for quite some time, not really um, uh, completely in the clinical setting yet. Also still quite a bit of research going on in that field, but th that's been going on for years. So um, try to train uh, uh, an AI system to recognize uh, tumors, for example, so masses somewhere in the body. Um, and then uh, when you uh, get new pictures from new patients, see if they can recognize the tumors uh, based on the previous uh, pictures from uh, patients with actual tumors uh, that they uh, put into the, the, the database and into the system. I think that's a very, very, very big part that um, um, where AI could at least in some parts take over a little bit of the, the job of a physician, for example, the radiologist. Um, I think in my uh, specific job that I work for now, um, not really the AI yet. We are at, at the moment well, uh, doing um, uh, like making uh, videos. Uh, like the information videos uh, for our donors so that we don't actually have to tell them everything that we want to tell them, but just, you know, have a video that they can watch, for example. So that's something that's, that's more just uh, uh, yeah, technical aspects in general, but not, not specific AI. Um, and also in the, in the medicine field, um, there's just always the, 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 yeah, kind of clinical, um, yeah, way of thinking and also the the ethical way of thinking that is uh, something that we as a doctor always still will have to do because that's, I think, one of the most important things that you always see with AI, uh, AI is that, that there's they cannot really think, you know, that everything is based on what you put into it and they cannot think uh, of new ideas, well, a little bit, but not like the, the not the ethical part uh, aspects of certain things. And I think especially that uh, is in the med uh, medicine field, uh, but also in the science field in general, very important uh, to take into account. So uh, I think there's just some specific stuff that AI can do to make our job easier, maybe. Um, but I don't think it's ever going to be, you know, uh, completely taken over, I guess. Yeah, uh, well, how is like, it in like your I said, field? This is, 
This is a very, very tricky question. And just to a disclaimer, what I'm going to say, it's my personal opinion. And and, and please uh, look for, for, for more other opinion, more other experts, because this is a very, I mean, everyone is debating about that. But if it's going to impact my job, for sure. I mean, I think it's going to impact every single job on earth. I mean, however, like Leonie said, AI is not, some, it's not new. It's, it, ChatGPT didn't invent AI. This has been being used in many, many uh, fields um, uh, for quite some years. I think what's revolutionary about ChatGPT is that it's very accessible, right? Anyone can go to a website and generate infinite, infinite amount of stuff. However, I do see that it's going to become a revolutionary tool. I mean, given the proportions, but uh, when a calculator came, probably people thought that uh, we will not need mathematicians anymore because I had a calculator to calculate. But in the end, all this technology, the when the computer came, everyone said the paper industry is that paper industry is until today. Uh, so I think it's it's going to be a very, very powerful tool that's going to change a lot of jobs. And, and, and the most important is not be afraid of AI is if I could give an advice, learn how to use as soon as possible. Maybe the teachers will be very mad at me right now, but it's something that you're gonna use in your job. I'm absolutely sure. So uh, learn how to use it. And as the experts, as humans, as Leonie said, we need to be able to differentiate, put some breaks, put some limitations because there'll be always aspects that a computer will not be able to simulate a human. And, and what you said about AI is always based on, on the information that we provide, right? Right now, 99% of the information was generated by humans. What might be a problem right now is that a lot of information is coming into the, the network generated by AI. And this is very really tricky. What's going to happen when a significant amount of the information was not made by humans, but made by AI. And then they, they self, uh, let's say the king confused. But in the end, it's, I think there's no stop for this. So uh, uh, don't see as a threat, see as a tool, see as a something that you have to control, that you have to understand and use as best as you can. Okay. We have Eddie asking if you had not been in your current job or one you've had previously, what would have been your dream job as a child? <laughs> Very nice question. <laughs> so I was thinking back to when I was a small child and all the the aspects, all the jobs that have come through my mind. There's a lot. <laughs> I think uh, when I was younger, something that I thought I was maybe going to do is become a teacher. Um, I didn't really know what kind of teacher, but any teacher would do. <laughs> Just uh, uh, learning stuff to people. Uh, and I think I I uh, would still like it. Uh, and I would maybe even be good at it because when I do presentations and stuff like that, I usually like to, like to you know, um, give explanations and, and and get information to people uh, so maybe in the future <laughs> but um, there's a lot of other jobs that I have uh, thought of doing uh, even uh, going into the army <laughs> even becoming a medical doctor in the army um, even becoming a pilot <laughs> I wanted to fly a plane <laughs> uh, I think there's there's just a lot of jobs that I have thought of doing uh, some a little bit more serious than others but um, yeah I think just just um, don't um, you know if you have a dream uh, um, that you really like and you are working in a different field don't think that the dream is over you know don't think that the dream cannot become reality anymore because you never know maybe I will work as a teacher in the future maybe I will become a pilot after all maybe I will become a teacher after all you know there's still there's so much stuff that you can do so just uh, be mindful of all these dreams that you have had and um, see which dreams you still have and um, maybe see if uh, those are still things that you want to do in the future maybe 
uh, for me, I'm very sure that when I was a child, I want to be a professional athlete. I want like to have a dream of going to the Olympics, get a medal, and these kind of things. I tried. I have to say, I used to play quite seriously table tennis. I could get to national teams and stuff, but uh, in the end, uh, uh, it didn't happen. But, I mean, there's no... No frustration. I mean, I have learned on discipline, on training, putting effort. You can really, really bring to to the to a professional career. Okay. What were you most uh, surprised about when you started out your career? Was there something that was a bit unexpected? Um, I think. Um, especially when I think back to when I started working in the hospital. Um, um, yeah, just just that even in the same field, so for example, the medical fields, there's just a lot of different um, yeah, personalities, <laughs> you should say, I could say. Um, uh, some parts of a job may work for someone else and they will not work for you. Um, and um, at first I found that really difficult. Also, be like like I was saying, I really thought I wanted to become a hematologist, so a doctor that uh, knows everything about blood diseases, but then I found out that the hospital life was not for me. Um, and uh, sometimes that can be difficult to acknowledge, you know, that, that just the way of working doesn't work for you specifically, but it does for other people. Um, but I think that's also maybe a very important thing to be mindful of, um, especially when you start doing a job, maybe even especially your first job that you do. Um, like I said, it doesn't have to be the job that you're going to do for the rest of your life. Just um, try to find the aspects in the job that you like and, of course, the aspects of the job that you don't like. Um, and uh, sometimes they will, um, yeah, just just also listen to to your own feelings about that. I think uh, for me, I just um, um, uh, for, when I was working in the hospital, I found out I didn't really um, go to my job with uh, enthusiasm, with energy. Uh, and then my uh, my boyfriend, for example, he also worked in the hospital and he was going to his work with, with enthusiasm. So I was like, OK, so this is something that I have to take into account and then go find out why it is that I do not like this and why does he do like it. And, um, you know, just just be mindful that that um, this can happen and that's OK. Just just look for what you like and what you don't like and then see what other uh, things you can do uh, afterwards. Can you repeat the question? I got a little bit distracted here. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's OK. The question was, uh, when you started out your career, was there anything that surprised you, something that was unexpected? Oh. And you've done many different things. You know, what, what really surprised me when I started working is that I used to have this idea that the professional world was super organized, that things was in place and everyone knew what to do and what to do and and you as an intern right the student you come up and you see that doesn't matter if it's a big company as it's all a mess and then you have to to really find your place and and that's your added value of, of organizing this 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 mess in those things i mean i really really used to to put in a in a in a podium the the companies and all oh, no. and it's not like that it is not like that it is really i mean people are struggling out there and, and you you are there to help other people that's it and... that's an honest answer yeah yeah <laughs> <That's> very true <laughs> i i actually was thinking that for example in the hospital i always thought this was the case, you know, the, all these doctors, all these medical experts, they know exactly what they're doing, doing. And then you start working as a doctor and you're like, no, I don't know. I have no idea what I'm doing. Help. <laughs> exactly. Because then as a student, you're super worried. Oh, I'm studying here. I don't know anything. And these people know much more than me. And, and they know more than you, but don't, don't worry. I mean, they don't know everything. They they also take risk decisions. They they. Sometimes they just assume things, and if they're wrong, they're gonna change it. They're gonna see if it works and if it's not working. That's pretty normal. Yeah. yeah. 
We have another question here. How important is life outside of work? Do you manage uh, to have a good balance? Yeah, I think for me, life outside of work is very important. I think that's also something that um, um, that's something that you're gonna see while you're working because there's some people that that have work that is that is their life. You know, they just live to work kind of, and I work to live. I think, and that's both is okay. You know, I like my job. I really like my job. I like what I'm doing. I like um, helping uh, patients in the end. You know, and helping donors uh, donate their stem cells, but. Um, like, I don't think it's the most important thing in my life. I think maybe the more more social aspect. So like like doing nice stuff with my friends, uh, with my boyfriend, of course, and um, uh, meeting with my family and seeing them regularly. I think that's maybe uh, the most important thing about life uh, for me. So, um, so yeah, I think it's really important to have a life outside of it. Um, and right now, I think I have a pretty good balance um like i said when i was working in the hospital i made quite long hours long days um i didn't uh, during that time i didn't really like the balance that i had so or there was just not a, not any balance i think it was just mainly going to work uh getting home and almost immediately going to sleep uh, and now i um i get home at, at a much earlier time uh, I can do, still do my my sports, you know. I can can have uh, some some um, some nice foods that I can make myself, you know. Just not just eat junk every day because I don't feel like I have time uh, and energy to 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 really cook something. So yeah, that's something I find really really important. Um, but you know, see what works for you. Because like I said, some people just really like the long hours and they just live for their job. And that's also okay, you know, um, as long as you make sure that it fits uh, the way that you um, want to live, you know. So if you see that uh, you kind of live to work, but that's not how you want it to be, try to see if there's uh, some way that you can get that balance, you know, back or... Maybe just see if there's something else for you out there. Yeah, I agree, Polony. I mean, this is a very personal. You have to find what you, what's your preference. I do think it's very important that you, you kind of like your job, enjoy your job, because in the end, you're spending eight, eight hours a day, sometimes more, sometimes less, but you are spending a big part of your day uh, at your job. So if you don't like it, and if, you, if you're frustrated, then I would cons consider changing because uh, it might affect you. But of course, the job cannot become, in my opinion at least, cannot become uh, your life. And I have experienced this when I moved to a new country, you don't know anybody. You just know the people from your job. Your job becomes your life because it's the only thing you know it. But then with time, you, you, you go meeting new people and doing more things outside the job and and you really see that it is very important to perform well, to be to be able to 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 do well your job. You need to have a you need to disconnect. You need to do something different. You need to talk about different things. You have to have different hobbies, different passions. It just just makes you to do better in your job. So yeah. So for example, I used to work five days a week. Now I change uh, for four days a week. To exactly i mean i live by myself so i have to cook by myself i have to clean my house so i just have more time for for for, for having my life a little bit more organized and and i i don't regret my decision you receive a little bit less money but it's it's it pays off at least for me are there any other differences you find between your um, maybe previous roles um, Tiago, you've been in different kinds of roles over the last many years. Are there any main differences you find? And Lenny, you you are in a more demanding kind of a job. But other than that, is there anything else? And is there anything you maybe miss from that time? You, you, said, you said rules or roles? Roles. Oh, roles, okay. Um... I don't know. I mean, like like I said, nowadays I work with a lot of management and technical, and I have to say that I like more the technical, even though uh, 
especially when we are in a difficult situation for the team or for the people, you kind of, I think I kind of miss, okay, I just, just want to do things for myself and uh, do my thing here. But um, that I would say, I mean, but it's fine. I think in the end, I like it, the, 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 the mix of, I think if I would go to an environment or if I would just, just technical and I just coding or doing things by myself, I think I'll be extremely frustrated as well. And I would be willing to have more contact to, to, to advise more people to not see the same mistakes. And I mean, I think it's a little bit of personal opinion. I think we, we always are kind of not satisfied what we have, but if you change it, we're going to miss what you, you used to have. So it's, you kind of have to manage your, okay, I don't want that. I change it and I come back, I change it and I come back. It, I think it would be normal you've been navigating through these, uh, these feelings and doing your career. Yeah, exactly. Just like Tiago said, there's some things that um, you like at your current job and some things that you may not like, and maybe you can see if you can change it. Um, I have the same. I think in my previous job in the hospital, um, like you said, it was more demanding. Um, it was like... Um, you you kind of get lift in the hospital. I don't know if that's the right way to say it, but like you go to your job and every every problem and everything just comes and comes and comes and it keeps going. <laughs> and um, uh, at the end of the day, you're like, oh, wow, okay, the day is gone already and I've done so much stuff. I don't even know what I've done, but it has happened. <laughs> and sometimes that's nice and sometimes it's not. Um, in the job that I have now, uh, sometimes there's just really, um, um, uh, I don't know, times that there's not a lot of, lot of stuff to do, but I really like that right now because then I can focus on my studies, for example, because I'm still in training uh, and just do some, some extra reading or stuff like that and just some calm uh, moments in, in the job is sometimes also nice to have. Um, and like I also said, like in the previous job, I didn't have a lot of autonomy, so I didn't, I couldn't decide for myself uh, what I wanted to do. And I have that a lot more right now. So that's something that I really like. Um, and also contact with my colleagues is quite a bit different because when I worked in the hospital, I worked with uh, my di direct colleagues who are also doctors who were not yet or were already in training to become a specialist. Uh, so there was a lot of um, um, uh, colleagues who were kind of in the same um, yeah, area of life, uh, area of work. Um, you could say, you know, that the, the, I don't know how to say it, but like um, kind of the same, same age also uh, as me. Um, uh, and now I work with colleagues who are all kinds of ages which is also nice but also sometimes if people start talking about uh, children and babies and stuff like that and I'm like ah no I'm a little bit too young for that so <laughs> maybe not <laughs> so um, there's just yeah different kind of context also with colleagues that that uh, sometimes are really nice and then sometimes you're like okay <laughs> no <laughs> okay do we have any more questions from our participants today? I guess not. OK. Uh, do you guys have any final remarks? Anything that you would like to uh, tell our teachers and students? Mm, I think a lot of stuff that we already said. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that like the, the actually something that come to my mind. Um, do you what's what is it that you're looking forward to next? Uh, like in oh, your let's, career. Let's say yeah, next that's year. Also a good question. Yeah. Um well, of course, like I said, I'm a I'm a physician in training, so mm -hmm. um, I I still have a lot of internships uh, to do. For example, in the field of uh, the the blood donations, but also the the, the organ donations. Um, uh, so that's a lot of uh, stuff that is something I don't really know a lot about, and I like that I'm going to see uh, how that's going to work out. And uh, of course, uh, in the end, after my studies, which is in about one and a half to two years, then I will uh, have to see where I end up in which field of the, the donor medicine. 
Um, so I'm also really curious uh, <laughs> where I'm going to to end up, uh, but it's also something that I really look forward to to see um, how that's going to be. Okay, Tiago. Uh, can you repeat again? Sorry, I'm very distracted. I'm using too many messages on my on my other computer. My other it's computer. okay. It's okay. I was asking, what is it that you're looking forward to in the next year? Um, I mean, I think for me, it's it's growing the 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 organization that I am. Uh, like for for us, growing means planting more trees and 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 expanding, allowing other organizations to do to do more. I mean, in the end, I am I am already the, the the one of the managers, so there's no no corporate ladder to 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 climb. But uh, just do what I'm doing, but bigger and more and to more people. That that's that's I think my goals for for the next years. Okay. Yeah, and I just wanted to say thanks a lot for all these really good questions. Uh, I mean, <laughs> wow, <laughs> they have very good questions here. Yes. Okay. Uh, would you like to share anything else at all? No, I don't think so. No. I mean, just just to the to the children that really really don't worry about your decision right now. I mean, it's really really. In, in, of course, you don't need to believe me. In a couple of years, you're gonna see that this was not the most important decision of your life, but by far not the most important. <laughs> yeah, I think that's like the theme today. That yeah. you can keep your mind open and experiment, play around, see what you like. Yeah. Thank you yeah, so much for joining definitely. us, both of you. Thank this you. This was very interesting. And um, I had a very nice talk time talking to both of you. I hope our teachers today who are here, our students, that they also learned something. I'm sure they did. And I, I like that it was light. That <laughs> it was light and it was fun. Both of you have a sense of humor about this, so that's nice. <laughs> yeah, I think it was very interesting, and we learned a lot about your careers and your education and the different transition and the skills required and also how you balance your life. And also, more importantly, good to keep an open mind that there isn't one fixed path. But thanks to all the schools joining us today, the teachers and the students. Um, yeah. Thank you again for joining our experts. And uh, we'll a publish lot, a recording of this very soon. We'll share it with the teachers and the experts. And we wish you a nice rest of the day. We'll close the chat now. Yes, you Thank too. You. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.